No, I don't waste no time What's going on guys and welcome back to a new video for those of you that are new to the channel My name is Joshua Daniel George a social media marketing online coach I have my own social media marketing agency called Brampaneer here in the Netherlands And I also have my own coaching business where I teach you guys on how to do the same So how to start your own agency how to get your first clients how to automate it scale it so that you too can live life on your own terms Now before we actually begin this video I just want to quickly ask you guys if there has ever been a piece of content on my channel that you have found informative or useful or there's ever been a video on my channel that has helped you forward helped you push the needle uh, whether that is with social media marketing um, just living life for your own terms in general or earning money online then please consider subscribing my goal for this year so 2020 is to hit 10,000 subscribers and I cannot do it without the help of you guys so like I said if you have not subscribed to my channel already and you are enjoying the content or there's ever been a video that you found useful then please consider doing so now with that said for those of you that have been following my journey for a little longer know that in 2018 and 2019 we had a e-com agency where we basically helped e-com stores get more sales and more conversions by setting up facebook advertising then towards the end of 2019 the start of 2020 we actually got a few lead generation clients on and we got amazing results for them which actually made us pivot from e-com to lead generation then obviously coronavirus hits and a lot of our e-com clients uh, sorry my lead generation clients um, end up having to shut up shop so obviously we had to pause our contract as well and we pivoted back to e-com so when we look at it chronologically i went from e-com to lead gen back to e-com again and i still get a lot of questions because we are now completely focused on e-com again i get a lot of questions on how do I actually find and uh, pitch e-com clients? You know, how, how does that whole process come about? And for those of you that are not in my coaching program, um, basically my entire method of outreach or my only method of outreach at the moment alongside the Facebook ads, which we will be getting into in just a second, is cold email. So we have paid traffic and we have cold email and those are like the only two methods of outreach that we are currently utilizing. And the reason why I go for cold outreach, uh, cold email outreach is because of how easily it is to automate and to outsource. So the way we've set it up, it's half automated, half outsourced uh, with virtual assistants. And the way we do it is we basically front load our email automation system with uh, leads that we find online which i'll show you guys in just a sec and then from there we send out a customized email blast if you will and then we basically ask our clients if it's okay to send them a quick loom video now in terms of what i say in the loom video etc i have a few little videos on that on my channel so make sure you check those out but what we do is we don't actually spend 10 to 20 minutes recording a loom video without the client actually agreeing to that so we send out a mass email to up to 500 uh, emails a day so 500 businesses a day um, when we are doing outreach and we only ever send the loom video to those who reply so that basically prevents us from recording a loom video and not actually getting a reply from the clients. Our conversion rate, which is something that I hear a lot from you guys, or you ask me quite a lot, on the loom videos is one in five. So about 20% of the people that uh, watch my loom video will actually agree to hop on a call with me, okay? So that there's always going to be like four clients that watch the video are not interested. They will reply. Um, which is another question to get, you know, what is your reply rate like? Almost every single person that I actually send the loom and watches it will reply with either a yes or a no. And the yes is then to agree to hop on a call with me. So I don't actually pitch my service in this loom. I don't pitch my service in the initial email, which I see a lot of you guys doing as well. I basically try and load them in with free content, free value. I explain to them that I've got a few ideas for them. I explain that, you know, it can be done better than you know what they are currently doing and from there i basically get them on a call and only on the call do i pitch my service and i only ever um explain about my retainer etc when they ask for it so on the call i am because that is another question that i often get 
like what you say on a call. I don't say anything. I just ask questions. I ask as many questions as possible. I want to find out as much as possible about their business. And only when they ask me a question, do I explain about my agency. So prior to them asking, okay, what is it that you do? They don't even know I've got an agency. I'm just asking them questions because I want to know if they are qualified for me to take them on as a client, but also, and most importantly, can I help them? So where is it that they are currently at? Where do they want to go? And can I help them bridge that gap? Can I take them from A to B to their desired situation? Is that something that I can physically do with Facebook advertising? If I can, then I'll mention it. And then from there, I basically say, you know, is either I'll say, is it okay if I explain what I do? But more often than not, they will ask me first and say, okay, what is it exactly that you do? And how can you do this? And only then do I explain that I've got an agency, okay? Because more often than not, they do not care about your agency. They do not care about your prior experience. They do not care about what you've done in the past. All they care about is what you can do for them. Now, before you guys read the comments and say, oh no, I've been asked about prior experience or one of your videos in the past, you've explained that because clients have been burnt before, they need to know about prior experience and so on and so forth. Yes, that is true, but in my opinion, it's all about how you handle that call. So if you come across as the expert, if you come across as confident, then chances are they won't even ask about your prior experience. If they get the feeling that you're either reading off a script, uh, that it's your first call, or for some reason they just don't believe what you're saying is true, then yes, they will ask for prior experience. So when you get asked that question, like, can I um, hear about testimonials? Can you send me your portfolio, etc.? Then you just need to think to yourself, okay, what have I done during this call to trigger that response for them to put their guard off? What have I done? What have I said wrong for them to actually, you know, come at me with something like that? And that is why I also recommend you to record your sales calls so you can pinpoint at what moment in the call you actually lose the client or you actually win the client over. Okay, so with that said, what I'm going to do now is actually hop into the computer and I'll show you some ways on how you can find, prospect and reach out to these uh, e-com clients. So without further ado, let's hop into the computer. This is my IP.ms and this is basically what we use to find e-com clients. And you know, there are other people that might say that this is not efficient, etc. But the key is you need to know how to use this program, how to use this directory, uh, myip.ms, how can you find potential clients. And the first thing you will see if you go to myip.ms is that the first stores are extremely big. You know, these are, you, you're not going to actually get my Shopify as a client. You're not going to get Gymshark as a client unless you, know, you are really good at what you do. But um, let's just assume that you are a beginner or you've only got your first two, three clients, then probably people on the first page are too big for you or already have a team in place. So what you do is you actually filter by businesses that get at least a thousand to five thousand clicks a day. Why? Because these are businesses or stores that do get traffic. So chances are they are actually running paid traffic or paid ads or they've got something in place or they are already popular and basically what you're trying to do now is help winners win more so rather than helping startups get their first few visits on their store you're helping people that already have an established business win more get more sales and get more conversions so Shopify is obviously the IP, uh, the owner, the hosting, etc. Popularity visits per day between a thousand and five thousand visitors per day. You can do two thousand to ten thousand, anything like that, as long as they get a substantial amount of traffic each and every day. Then from there, because obviously you know these are all e-com stores, all potential clients for you. You can open them all up into new tabs. So I'll open up two or three just to show you guys what that looks like. And there we go. That's the third one. And then from there, there's a few things that I look at. Um, first thing I like to know is have they got the Facebook Pixel? For this, I use the Facebook Pixel Helper, which is a free plugin for Google Chrome. And one con common like mistake or one thing that um, I see a lot of people do is they see this and they assume, okay, barucas.com or barucas, whatever, however you pronounce it, has not got a Pixel. What I want you to do is switch off your ad blocker I've got two, so I'll just quickly switch those off here and then double check if they haven't got the pixel. And as you can see here, 
uh, barukas.com has actually got the pixel so um just quickly double check that before you start even i'm saying you haven't got the pixel etc and then they just come back and say guy uh, or dude you know you, you we have got the pixel it's just you, you need to actually double check before you do something like that okay i don't know what's going on here some kind of exit intense video so i'll just quickly edit that uh, or exit out of that so like i said the first thing i see i check for is have they got the pixel then from there, because obviously a pixel doesn't say everything, you know, there's a lot of stores with the pixel but don't actually know what to do with it, etc. From there, I um, go onto this store and I see what happens to the pixel if I basically go through their flow. So again, just make sure that your ad blocker is off. Uh, actually, I will, I'll click on don't run on this site at all. Exclude this site. There we go. So from here, I basically want to check what happens if I click on an item. So as you can see here, view content. So that means that they are tracking who is viewing the content. Add to cart, what happens then? As you can see, the add to cart um, pixel event appears as well. Check out what happens there. Usually with Shopify, this is all set up automatically, which is good. Um, but it's always just good to go through the flow just to make sure that everything is set up correctly. As you can see, initiate checkout is set up uh, as well. So from here, we know, okay, the pixel is, is set up correctly. Now, that does not necessarily mean that they do not need your help because just because they've got the pixel set up correctly does not mean that they are profitable, does not mean that they are running ads and so on and so forth, okay? And nowadays, I actually prefer clients that have the pixel installed why because that means that they know that tracking data and paid traffic is everything and in my opinion it is now easier to promote some or to convince someone that is already in the mindset of okay i need paid traffic to promote my business um it's easier to, co to convince someone like that that i am the right person to take them to the next level than it is to convince someone that has no idea what the pixel is etc um that paid traffic and facebook ads is the way to go okay so rather than trying to convince them that they need facebook ads and that i am the right person for the job if they already have all this set up all you need to do is convince them that you are the right person for the job and what is the job getting them from their current situation to their desired situation and those are two questions that you do need to ask if you get these on a call you need to know how much they are earning now how much money they are currently making what their profit margin is and where do they want to be in six to twelve months from now and then if you feel confident enough that you can take them from point A to point B, then you can say, okay, well, I can definitely help you with that. And then, like I said, from there, they'll probably ask, okay, well, then what is it that you do? And how come you think that you can get me to the next level? And then you pitch your agency service. Okay, so like I said, uh, my IP.ms to the website, and then I check the pixel, I check the flow, and then from there, I go to their Facebook page. Usually at the bottom, you can see the Facebook page here, and also the Instagram page. And then what I wanna now see is are they running any ads and if the ads are any good so as you can see here page transparency for those of you that have the new layout of facebook i absolutely despise the new layout so that is why i've changed it back but for you it'll be on the left hand side you'll see page transparency for those of you that are old like me that like page transparency on the right uh you know stick to the classic layout so see more go to ads library again if you go to page transparency and you do not see the go to ads library button just make sure that you have your ads blocker switched off because sometimes it will not appear that the link will not be there so if you haven't got the go to ads library button then switch off your ad blocker and it should be there okay from there filter by i'm currently in the netherlands so that's why it said netherlands filter by countries and as you can see these guys are running ads then from there i look at the amount of ads they are running I look at when they set up the ads and what placements they are running. Why? Because as you can see here, the 30th of July, that is actually the time, uh, not actually, that's yesterday, it's the 31st uh, at the time of recording this. Um, because they are running ads from, like, basically, basically they've, they've, they've set up new ads yesterday. For me, that's an indication that they have not yet found that winning formula because. Why would they set up ads? Yes, okay, you know, it can be new ads, ads for August, etc. That is always a possibility. But for me, that is an indication that they have not yet found that winning formula because otherwise they would not set up new ads. Okay, so if you see, for example, last ads set up the, I don't know, the 30th of December 2019, that is eight months ago, then either they forgot about it, either they have no idea what they're doing, or the ads are just really, really good. Okay, so you just need to, try and gauge this and try and figure out, okay, 
are these people testing out different ads because they haven't yet found something that's profitable yet or are the ads just generally um like basically in need of new creatives etc so like i said from there i look at the quantity of ads so as you can see to be honest these guys are doing a pretty good job and um, they've got a bunch of different types of advertisements they've got um, as you can see here i think these are dynamic uh, catalog ads they have got instagram stories which i think it is um, or it's some kind of story anyway they've got videos they've got all kinds of different types of content so in my opinion these are doing a pretty good job now what they are doing which is something that there are a few discussions about they are running it on all placements now, one marketer will say, no, you need to only run on Facebook and Instagram until that is profitable, and then you scale to new placements. And then also uh, another marketers uh, that basically say, no, all placements is fine because Facebook knows better than you which placement is the most profitable. Um, I am a bit caught in two minds about this. I do use it to my benefit. So I, if I see that they are running on all placements and I do want to make a pitch, I will say, okay, I see you're running on all placements. How do you know which one is profitable? Or do you know which one is prof most profitable? Or why are you running this on all placements and so on and so forth, okay? So that's just something to keep in mind. And usually if they are only running on Facebook and Instagram, then in my opinion, they sort of know what they're doing and they're not just relying on what Facebook says. Um, you know, they are basically taking matters into their own hands and they're running out only on the placements that they think are the most profitable. Okay, so let's say, hypothetically speaking, we think this client is qualified, this client is someone that we can help to the next level. Again, we will never know until we actually see their business manager, but let's say we assume that this client needs help and that we can be the right person for the job. Then there are three ways of reaching out to this client. Number one is by sending them a message on Facebook. So you're sending it to the business page um, number two is that you look on the right hand side and you see if it's possible to see who the owner is and then you can add the owner as a friend on Facebook and send them a message always add them as a friend first before you send the message because otherwise it will be stuck on the message requests and he won't actually see the message until he adds you as a friend uh, second method is going to the about section here clicking on their email and sending them a quick email here. Uh, I did not actually mean to click on that, but as you can see, we can now send uh, an email to help at baracus.com. And then of course we get the question, well, are we supposed to be reaching out to help at, aren't we not supposed to be reaching out to the business owner? Yes, that is true. But if you haven't got the email of the business owner, then why not just reach out to this email and see who replies. In my, I, I am not no longer scared of gatekeepers. I will literally just build up rapport with the gatekeeper and ask if I can get the contact details of the business owner, okay? So don't get disheartened or demotivated if you can't find the address of the business owner. Now, that is method number two. Let me just quickly remove this, don't save. Method number three is that is actually not the right where is our website there we go method number three is by using a plugin called hunter.io and as you can see um again this is a plugin for google chrome as you can see the two emails that pop up are help at baracus.com uh, which is one that we found on facebook but we also have wholesale at baracus.com which we, again we can copy Method number three is by sending them a message on um, Instagram. I'm not actually sure if you can send them a DM on the basically the business page, uh, the website desktop page of Instagram. Let me just quickly check. Ah, okay, so we can. So you follow them and then you send them a message here. Click on message and then we can send them a quick message uh, through Instagram. Okay, now another thing that I do want to quickly mention if you do follow them on Instagram, you will get the option to see what other pages are similar to this business page. And then you can basically look at the competitors if they have any and then potentially reach out to them as well. And this is a great way to just see like, what business is similar to the business that you are reaching out to. And it's also a great way of seeing which business um, is similar to the business that you already have as a client. So let's say you are getting great results for a meal prep client. You can then go to the client's Instagram Go on to uh, that little icon there and see if there's any other competitors that you could potentially reach out to. Again, obviously, you need to figure out, can you actually have them as a client as well? Or are you just competing against yourself in terms of Facebook ads, etc.? Okay, so that is just another way of reaching out to um, you know, the business on Instagram. Then what you can also do, if I just quickly open up a new tab and go to LinkedIn, you can also see if they are already on LinkedIn. If they are, 
usually you'll be able to find the business owner as well. Yes, you've also got the sales navigator, etc. Um, at the time of recording this, I do not have that. I just have the free version of LinkedIn. So uh, eat Barra Barucas. I probably butchered this name oh, 10 times uh, while recording this video. Let's see if we can find it. No, okay, so unfortunately, eat, have I just built that correctly? Yes, I have. Unfortunately, these are not available on LinkedIn, so we cannot actually um, reach out to them on LinkedIn. If we could, then that would have been a great way to find out who is the business owner. So if you want to reach out to these guys, send them a message on Facebook, add the business owner as a friend on Facebook, if he is on the right-hand side by page transparency, then send them a message on Facebook as well. Um, you can send them an email here, or you can uh, send them a DM on Instagram. Okay, so those are the methods of outreach uh, for e-com clients. And like I said, do not pitch your service right away. Tell them that you've got a few ideas for them. Ask them if it's okay to send a quick Loom video. Then uh, in the Loom video, you give them value and then you ask or you basically say to them, listen, if you want to know more about this, let's hop on a quick call. I've got a few more ideas for you. And then on the call, you basically find out, okay, where are they at, where do they want to be, and can you actually help them with that? Okay, so that is all I've got for today. Hope you found this video useful. Like I said, if you've got anything else to this video or any other videos that I've posted on my channel, please consider subscribing. Leave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more, and I'll see you all in the next video.